राधे कृष्णा जय श्री कृष्णा कृष्ण वंदे जगत गुरु वेलकम टू ऑल अवर फोक्स फ्रेंड्स ऑफ लॉर्ड कृष्णा ऑन दिस थर्ड डे ऑफ द ग्लोबल फेस्टिवल ऑफ डिविनिटी इन ह्यूमैनिटी सेलिब्रेटिंग द यूनिवर्सल टीचिंग्स ऑफ लॉर्ड श्री कृष्णा ऑन द अकेजन ऑफ श्री कृष्ण जन्माष्टमी Every year, Sri Krishna Janmashtami would be celebrated with lot of celebrations, lot of colorful events. This year, we are having Krishna Janmashtami twice repeated. On August 11th, we started as per the calendar in some parts of the country, and also again September 10th, 11th, we are having again Sri Krishna Janmashtami according to the other calendar. As you all know, we have the Chandra Mana and Saura Mana. So accordingly, two different. Then Mastami is we are having. So why not we celebrate the both? Is what the thought which came and see and so we thought a month long global festival from that Jan Mastami to the other Jan Mastami. And how do we celebrate? Because this time it's a different situation that we are having the situation of the pandemic which is uh, going on. So we are in the lockdown and all. So online era is going on. So let's use this online and have an online global festival as a thought which came with which Adhyatma Yoga. along with advait academy started this beautiful month long series and we are so blessed to have great scholars acharya swami ji is to bless us in this wonderful occasion and i welcome all our participants the enthusiastic friends of lord krishna the folks who are all every day joining right from the yoga event it could be or the oneness festival and all that we have been doing you know always the enthusiastic participation of all of you is giving us more and more enthusiasm to bring with lot of new events and so i offer my humble pranams to each one of you and as you know today you know we are going to see krishna's the gita acharya even every day that's what we are seeing in the first day also swami atmapriyanand ji brought the aspect of jagat guru in krishna from his life from the flute how prana and flute are connected and also krishna's message from the gita yesterday when sushri nivedita didi spoke about jagat guru krishna's role in bharata as a vishwa guru also she beautifully brought those essential three points of krishna's teaching of oneness of the uh, different paths leading to the same goal and about the universal well being and all this that she connected very well with the applications in our day to day life with various dharmic concepts and these are the things which should make when we follow that it will become india will lead the world as being a vishwa guru is what we learned yesterday and today with more the krishna's shastra pramana shri krishna says tasma shastram pramanam te karya karya vyavasthito so krishna as a gita acharya as a shastrakara how he has given to us the great yoga shastra its brahma vidya and yoga shastra as rightly swami atampriyan ji said the brahma vidya is the science and yoga shastra is technology how shri krishna brings both these together in the beautiful the song divine bhagavad gita and so we are privileged to have swami sadatmanand ji maharaj who is the chief acharya at arsha vidya gurukulam koyamattur anekatti and before swami ji would take us talk today we have in the krishna kala series you are going to have chanting of the bhagavad gita shlokas what a nice way to you know start by chanting the bhagavad gita and of course we all can do chanting but to listen from young kids like skanda and shravya that is going to add a lot of joy to us and we are having with us skanda and shravya i welcome both of you namaste hari sharanam hari sharanam and along with them today we have their guru shrimati meena vaikuntham i welcome shrimati meena vaikuntham the guru was made not only these two kids in fact she has hundreds of kids hundreds of elders and uh, i am very fascinated to hear about her classes on narayaniyam and the bhagavad gita and i have told that i am going to join the narayaniyam classes soon uh, online and we are going to have some more students of her also coming and chanting in this beautiful a month long global uh, festival so hari sharanam radhe krishna welcome radhe krishna radhe krishna nice to see that you have prepared such wonderful youngsters in this path of you know gita in fact yesterday uh, one of my friend she um, 
Abhishek Sharma had uh, commented in the uh, Facebook, like when Krishna Janmashtami comes, we immediately dress up children as Krishna, Radha, and all those things and take those pictures and do. So more than that, the teachings of Krishna should be taught to the young children. So he was telling, why don't you make them chant the shlokas of Gita? Why don't you teach them that by heart? And that is what Meena Ji has been doing through her uh, Narayaniya Satsang uh, Samiti as a part of which she has the Bala Satsang, uh, where Skanda and Shavya are the members. Guru Srimati uh, Meena Ji is a master's in three subjects. I think it's a Triveni Sangama. She has done her master's in chemistry, Sanskritam, and yoga as well. Wow, I'm so glad to see that she is also a master's in yoga. They call her has here. And she has done her uh, master uh, MPhil in Sanskritam as well. Very passionate about music and dance. So a wonderful combination that we see in uh, Guru Shimati Veena. And also she is well versed in English, Sanskrit, and Tamil, and passionate in, about promoting. Bhakti and our Indian culture through satsangs, bhala satsangs and parayanams. And she has been awarded, awarded the title of Anmika Seva Ratna by the Tamil Nadu Brahmins Association. And it much more to get, Meenaji. And we are so glad that you have trained these kids. And uh, Skanda is in the sixth grade. And uh, uh, along with uh, his school, he is also passionate about learning mridangam and uh, uh, various musical uh, instruments also. And Shravya is also in class 10th, 10th oh, means very crucial. You know, parents won't let you do anything, but your parents are so good enough to let you uh, chant and do all those things. So we are thankful to your parents. And Shravya is also very passionate about dance. So that's a, a beautiful thing. So maybe another day we should have uh, Skanda sing and play the Mridangam and uh, Shravya would dance for it also. So nice to welcome both of you. And I uh, welcome you to start the Gita chanting. We are also eager to hear your chanting. Hari Sharanam Radhe Krishna. Hari Sharanam. Parthaya Pratibodhitam Bhagavatam Narayane Naswayam Vyasena Gratitam Purana Muninam Madhye Mahabharatam Advaitam Rita Varshinim Bhagavatim Ashtadashadhyayinim Ambatva Manusandadhami Bhagavad Gita Bhagavad Veshinim Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Shri Krishna Paramatma Nenamaha Atha Ekadashodhyayaha Vishwarupa Darshana Yogaha Arjuna Uvacha Madanugrahaya paramam Guhya madhyatma sangitam Yatva yogtam vachastena Mohoyam vigato mama Bhavapyayau hi bhotanam Shrutau vestara shomaya Tvatta kamala patraksha Mahatmyam apichavyayam Eva me tadyathathatvam Atmanam parameshwara Drashtum ichhami te rupam Aishwaram purushottama Manyase yadita chakyam Maya drashtum ite prabho Yogeshwara tato metvam Darshayatmanam avyayam Shri Bhagavanu vacha Pashyame partha rupani Shatashotha sahasrashaha Nana vidhani devyani Nana varna kriti nicha Pashyadityan Vasun Rudran Ashvinau Marutas Tatha Bahun Yadrishta Purvani Pashyashcharyani Bharatam Ihaikastham Jagat 
कृष्णम पश्याद सचराचर मम देहे गुणाकेश यद्रष्टुमसी न तो मं शक्य से द्रष्टुम अनेन स्वचक्षुषा दिव्यम ददा ते चक्षु पश्य मे योगमश्वरम संजय उवाच तथो राजन महायोगेश्वरो हरि दर्शयामास पाथय परमश्वर अनेक वक्नयन अनेकाभुत दर्शन अनेक दिव्याभरण दिव्यानेकोद्यताुध दिव्यमल्यांबरधर दिव्यगंधापन सर्वाश्चर्यमय देव अनंत विश्व मुखम दिवि सूर्य सहस्र भवेदुगपदुत्थिता यदि भाषदृशी सासस्त महात्म त्रैकस्थम जगत्कृत्म रविभक्तमनेक अपश्यदेव शरीर पांडवस्तदा तत स विस्मयाधनजय प्रणम्य शिस्तांजलिभाषत अर्जुन उवाच पश्या देवास्तव देवदेहे सर्वास्था भूत विशेष संघान ब्रह्मणमीश कमलासनस्थम ऋषिश्च सर्वागा दिव्यानेक बाहूदर वक्र नेत्र पश्यांदम न मध्यम न पुनस्तवादि पश्या विश्वर विश्व किटिन गदीन चक्रिण चेजोराशि सर्व दीप्तिम पश्यांदुर्निरीक्ष्यम सामता दीप्तालाकद्युतिमेयर परम वेदिव्यम से विश्व परम निधान व्यय शाश्वत धर्म गोप्ता सनातन स्व पुषो मत मे अनादिमध्यात वीर अनंत बाहुम शशि सूर्य नेत्र पश्यां दीप्तुताश वक्म स्वतेजस विश्वद पृथिव्योरदर हि व्याक दिशश्च सर्वा दृष्ट्वाभुत रूपमुग्रम तेद लोकत्रयं प्रव्यथित महात्म अमीहे सुरसंघा विशति केचिभीता प्राजलो गृणती स्वस्ती महर्षि सिद्ध संघा सुवंति स्तुति पुष्क रुद्रादिवसो ये चाध्या विश्वश्विनौ मरतोष्म गंधर्वयक्षासुरसिद्ध संघा वीक्षे विस्मताश्चम महत्ते बहुवक्रने महाबाहो बहु बाहूरुपाद बहूदर बहुदंष्टा दृष्ट्वा लोका प्रव्यथिता नभस्पृशं दीप्तमनेक वर्ण व्यानम दीप्त विशाल नेत्र 
दृष्ट्वा हित्वा प्रव्यचितांतरात्मा जगन् नविंदा मिशबं चविष्णो दंश्रा कराला निचते मुखानि दृष्ट्वाइ वकाला नल सन्निभानि देशो न जाने नल भेच शर्व प्रसीद देवेश जगन्निवास अमीचत्वाम धृतराष्ट्रस्य पुत्रा सर्वे सहैवावनि पाल संखै भीष्मो द्रोण सूत पुत्रस्तथा सव सहास्मदी ऐरपि योधमुख्यै वक्त्राणि तेत्वरमाणा विशंति दम्ष्रा कराणानि भयानकानि केचिद्विलग्ना दशनांतरेशु संद्रिष्यंते चूर्णितै रुत्तमांगै यथानदीनां बहवोंगु वेगा समुद्रमेवा भिमुखाद्रवंती तथा तवामी नरलोक वीरा विशंति वक्त्राण्य भिविज्वलंती यथा प्रदीप्तं ज्वललं पतंगा विशंति नाशाय समृद्ध वेगा तथैव नाशाय विशंति लोका तवापि वक्त्राणि समृद्ध वेगा लेलिह्यसे ग्रसमानस समंतात लोकान समग्रान वदनै ज्वलद्भिहि तेजो भिरा पूर्य जगत समग्रम भासस्त वोग्राफ प्रतवंति विष्णो आख्या ही मेको भवानुग्ररूप नमोस्तु के देव बर प्रसीद विज्ञातो मिच्छा मि भवंत माध्यम नहि प्रजाना मि तव प्रवृत्तिम श्री भगवानुवाच कालोस्मि लोकक्षय कृत प्रवृत्त लोकान समाहतो मि हा प्रवृत्त रिते पिताम भविष्यंति सर्वे ये वस्थिता प्रत्यनी के शुयोधा तस्मात्पमुत्तिष्ठ यशोल भस्व जित्वा शत्रुन भुंक्ष्वराज्यम समृद्धम मयाई वैते निहता पूर्णमेव निमित्त मात्रम भव सव्यसाचिन द्रोणम च भीष्मम च जयद्रथम च कर्णम तथान्यान पियोध वीरान मया हतां स्त्वं जहिमा व्यतिष्ठा युद्ध्यस्व जेता सिरणे सपत्नान संजय वाच एतत छुत्वा वचनम केश वस्य कृतां जलिर्वे पमानक किरीती नमस्कृत्वा भूय एवाह प्रिष्णम तगत गदम भीत भीत प्रणम्य अर्जुन वाच स्थाने खृशी केश तब प्रकीर्त्या जगत्र खृश्यत्य नुरज्यते च रक्षाम सी भीता निधि शोद्र वंती सर्वे नमस्यंति च सिद्ध संखा कस्माच्चते न न मेरन महात्मन गरीय से ब्रह्मणोप्यादिकत्रे अनंत देवेश जगन्निवास त्वमक्षरं सदसत्तत्परं यत् त्वमादि देवपुरुषपुराणः त्वमस्य विश्वस्य परं निधानं वेदासि वेद्यं च परं च धाम त्वयाततं विश्वमनंतरुपं वायुर्यमोग्निर्वरुणशशांकः प्रजापतिस्त्वं प्रपितामहश्च नमो नमस्ते सुसहस्रकृत्वः पुनश्च भूयोपि नमो नमस्ते नमःपुरस्तादथ प्रिष्ठतस्ते नमोस्तुते सर्वत एव सर्व 
अनंत सखेति मत्वा प्रसभं यदुक्तं हे कृष्ण हे यादव हे सखेति अजानता महिमानं तवेदं मया प्रमादात् प्रणयेन वापि यच्छावहा सार्थम सत्कृतोसि विहार शय्यासन भोजनेशु एकोत्थवाप्यच्छुद तत्समक्षं तत्क्षामये त्वामहम प्रमेयं पितासि लोकस्य चराचरस्य त्वमस्य पूज्यस्य गुरुर करियान नत्वत समोस्य भ्यधिक कुतोन्यह लोकत्रये प्यप्रतिम प्रभाव तस्मात प्रणम्य प्रणिधाय कायं प्रसादये त्वामह मीश मीडियं पितेव पुत्रस्य सखेव सक्युः प्रियः प्रियायारहसि देव सोधं अद्रष्ट पूर्वं हृषितोस्मि दृष्ट्वा भयेन च प्रव्यथितं मनोमे तदेवमे दर्शय देवरूपं प्रसीद देवेश जगन्निवास किरीपिनं गदिनं चक्रहस्तं इच्छा मित्वां द्रष्टु महं तथैव तेनैव रूपेन चतुर्भुजेन सहस्र बाहो भव विश्वमूर्ते श्री भगवानु वाच मया प्रसन्ने नतवाजुनेदं रूपं परं दर्शितं आत्मयोगात् तेजो मयं विश्वमनंतमाद्यं यन्ने त्वदन्ये न न दृष्टपूर्वं न वेदयक्ष्याध्ययनाय न दानाय हि न चक्रिया भेन्न तपो भिरुग्राय हि एवं रूपशक्य अहं रेलोके दृष्टुं त्वदन्ये न कुरुप्रवीरा माते व्यथा माचवि मूढ़भावः दृष्टवारुपं घोरमीद्रिम्ममेदं व्यपेत भीफ्रीतमनाफुनस्वं तदेवमेरुपमिदं प्रपश्य संचयोवाच इत्यर्जनं वासुदेवस्तथोक्वा स्वकम्रुपं दर्शयामासभूयः आश्वासयामासचभीतमेनं भूत्वा पुनस्साम्यवपुर महात्मा अर्जुनवाच वैश्वेदमानुषं रूपं तवसाम्यं जनादन इदानीमस्मि संवृत्तः सचेतास्त्र प्रतिंगतः श्री भगवानुवाच सुदर्दर्शमिदं रूपं दृष्टवानसि अन्मम देवा अप्यस्य रोपस्य नित्यं दर्शन कांशिनः नाहं वेदैर्न तपसा नदाने नरचेज्यया शक्य एवं विधो दृष्टुं दृष्टवानसि माम्यथा भक्त्यात्वनन्यया शक्यः अहमेवं विधोर्जुन ज्ञातं द्रष्टं च तत्वेन प्रवेष्टं च परंतप मत्कर्मक्रिन्मत् परमह मद्भक्तसंग वज्जितह निर्वैरसर्वभूतेशु यस्समामेति पांडव ओम तत्सदिति श्रीमद् भगवद् गीतासु उपनिषद्सु ब्रह्मविद्यायाम योगशास्त्रे श्रीकृष्णाजुन संबादे विश्वरूपदर्शनयोगो नाम एकादशो ज्ञायह सर्वधर्मान परित्यज्य मामेकं शरणं रजम अहं त्वा सर्वपापेभ्यः मोक्षयेश्यामि माशुचः ओम भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम श्री कृष्ण परमात्मने नमः 
अथ द्वादशोध्याय भक्ति अर्जुन उवाच एवं सततयुक्ता ये भक्ता स्वां पर्युपासते ये चाप्यक्षरम अव्यक्तम तेशां के योग वित्तमाह श्री भगवानु वाच मैया वेश्य मनो ये माम नित्ययुक्ता उपासते श्रद्धया परयो पेताह के मे युक्त तमामताह ये त्वक्षरम निर्देश्यं अव्यक्तं पर्युपासते सर्वत्र गमचिंत्यं च पूटस्थमचलं ध्रुवं सन्नियं मेंद्रिय ग्रामं सर्वत्र समबुद्धयः ते प्राप्नुवंति मामेव सर्वभूत हिते रचाह लेशो अधिकत रस्तेशां अव्यक्ता सत्त चेतसां अव्यक्ता हिगते दुखं देहवद्धिरवाप्यते येतु सर्वाणि कर्माणि मै सन्यस्य मत्पराह अनन्ये नैव योगेन माम ध्यायंत उपासते तेशा महं समुद्धत्ता मृत्यु समसार सागरात भवा मिनचिरात पार्थ मैया वेशित चेतसां मैये वमन आधत्स्व मै बुद्धिन्दि वेशय निवसिष्यसि मैये व अत उर्ध्वम्न संशयह अथ चित्तं समाधातुं न शक्नोशि मैस्थिरं अभ्यास योगेन ततह मामिच्छात्तुं धनंचय अभ्यासे प्यसमत्थोसि मत्कर्म परमोभव मदर्थम अपिकर्माणि पुर्वन सिध्यम वाप्स्यसि अथै तदप्य शक्तोसि कर्तुं मद्योग माश्रतह सर्व कर्म फलत्यागं ततक्कुरु यतात्मवान श्रेयो हे ज्ञानम अभ्यासात ज्ञानात ध्यानम विशिष्यते ध्यानात कर्म फलत्यागह त्यागात शांतिरनंतरम अद्वेशा सर्व भूतानाम मैत्रक करुण एवच निर्ममो निरहंकारह समदुख सुख अक्षमी संतुष्ट सततम योगी यतात्मा जठनिष्चयह मैयर पितमनो बुद्धि ही यो मध्यत्त समे प्रियह यस्मानो द्विजते लोकह योगानोद्विजते चयह हर्षा मर्षभयो द्वेगाई मुक्तो यस्सचमे प्रियह अनपेक्षशुचेत दक्षह उदासीनोगतव्यथह सर्वारं भपरित्यागी यो मध्यत्तसमे प्रियह यो न फ्रिश्यति न द्वेष्टि न शोचति न कांक्षति शुभा शुभ परित्यागि भक्ति मान्यसमे प्रियह समर्शत्राउच मित्रेच तथा मानाप मानयो हो शीतोष न सुखदुखेशु समसंगा विवर्जितह तुल्यने दास्तो तेर माउनी संतुष्टो ये न के न चित अनिके तस्थिरमति ही भक्तिमान में प्रियो नरह ये तो धर्म्याम्रतनिदम यथोक्तं पर्युपासते श्रद्धानामत परमाह भक्तास्तेति वमे प्रियाह ओम तत्सदिति श्रीमद् भगवद् गीतासु उपनिषद्सु ब्रह्मविद्यायाम योगशास्त्रे श्रीकृष्णाज
ಅರ್ಜುನ ಸಂವಾದೆ ಭಕ್ತಿಯೋ ನಾಮ ದ್ವಾದಶೋಧ್ಯಾಯ ಸರ್ವರ್ಮಾನ್ ಪರಿತ್ಯಜ್ಯ ಮಾಮೇಕಂ ಶರಣ ವ್ರಜ ಅಹಂ ವಾ ಪಾಪೇಭ್ಯ ಮೋಕ್ಷಯಿಷ್ಯಾಮಿ ಮಾಶು ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪರಮಾತ್ಮನೆ ನಮಃ ಅಥ ಪಂಚದಶೋಧ್ಯಾಯ ಪುರುಷೋತ್ತಮ ಯೋಗ ಶ್ರೀ ಭಗವಾನುವಾಚ ಊರ್ಧ್ವಮೂಲಮಥ ಶಾಖಂ ಅಶ್ವತ್ಥಂ ಪ್ರಾಹುರವ್ಯಯ ಛಂದಾಂಸಿ ಯಸ್ತೇದ ಸ ವೇದ ವಿತ್ ಅಥಶ್ಚೋಧ್ವಂ ಪ್ರಸೃತಾಖಾ ಗುಣ ಪ್ರವೃದ್ಧ ವಿಷಯ ಪ್ರಬಾಳ ಅಥಶ್ಚ ಮೂಲಾನ್ಯನುಸಂತತಿ ಕರ್ಮಾನುಬಂಧೀನಿ ಮನುಷ್ಯ ಲೋಕೆ ನ ರೂಪಮಸ್ಯೇಹ ತಥೋಪಲಭ್ಯತೆ ನಾಂತೋ ನ ಚಾದೇರ್ನ ಚ ಸಂಪ್ರತಿಷ್ಠ ಅಶ್ವತ್ಥಮೇನ ಸುವಿರೂಢ ಮೂಲ ಅಸಂಗ ಶಸ್ತ್ರೇನ ದೃಢೇನ ಚಿತ್ವಾ ತತಃಪದ ತತ್ಪರಿಮಾರ್ಗಿತವ್ಯ ಯಸ್ಮಿನ್ ಗತಿವರ್ತಂತಿ ಭೂಯ ತಮೇವ ಚಾದ್ಯ ಪುರುಷಂ ಪ್ರಪದ್ಯೆ ವ್ಯತ ಪ್ರವೃತ್ತಿ ಪ್ರಸೃತ ಪುರಾಣಿ ನಿರ್ಮಾಣ ಮೋಹಾಜಿತ ಸಂಗ ದೋಷ ಅಧ್ಯಾತ್ಮ ನಿತ್ಯ ವಿನಿವೃತ್ತ ಕಾಮ ದ್ವಂದ್ವೈರ್ವಿಮುಕ್ತ ಸುಖ ದುಃಖ ಸಂಯೈ ಗಚ್ಛಂತ್ಯ ಮೂಢ ಪದಮ್ಯಯ ತತ್ ನ ತದ್ಭಾಸಯತೆ ಸೂರ್ಯ ನ ಶಾಂಕೋ ನ ಪಾವಕ ಯತ್ಗತ್ವಾನಿವರ್ತಂತೆ ತಾಮ ಪರಮ ಮಮ ಮಮೈವಾಂಶೋ ಜೀವಲೋಕೆ ಜೀವಭೂತ ಸನಾತನ ಮನಃಷ್ಠಾನೀಂದ್ರಿಯಾಣಿ ಪ್ರಕೃತಿಸ್ಥಾನಿ ಕರ್ಷತಿ ಶರೀರ ಯದವಾಪ್ನೋತಿ ಯಾಪ್ಯುತ್ಕ್ರಾಮತೀಶ್ವರ ಗೃಹೀತ್ವೈತಿ ಸಂಯಾತಿ ವಾಯುರ್ಗಂಧಾನಿ ವಾಶಯಾತ್ ಶ್ರೋತ್ರ ಚಕ್ಷುಸ್ಪರ್ಶನ ಚಸನ ಘ್ರಾಣಮೇವ ಅಧಿಷ್ಠಾ ಮನಶ್ಚಾ ವಿಷಯಾನುಪಸೇವತೆ ಉತ್ಕ್ರಮಂತ ಸ್ಥಿತ ವಾಪಿ ಭುಂಜಾನ ಗುಣಾನ್ವಿತ ವಿಮೋಧಾನುಪಶ್ಯಂತಿ ಪಶ್ಯಂತಿ ಜ್ಞಾನ ಚಕ್ಷುಷ ಯತಂತೋ ಯೋಗಿನಶ್ಚೈನ ಪಶ್ಯಂತ್ಯಾತ್ಮನ್ಯವಸ್ಥಿತ ಯತಂತೋಪ್ಯಕೃತಾತ್ಮನ ನೈನಂ ಪಶ್ಯಂತ್ಯ ಚೇತಸ ಯದಾದಿತ್ಯಗತ ತೇಜ ಜಗದ್ಭಾಸಯತೆ ಖಿಲ ಯಂದ್ರಮಸಿ ಯಾಗ್ನ ಸತ್ತೇಜೋ ವಿಧಿ ಮಾಮಕ ಗಾಮಾವೇಶ್ಯ ಚ ಭೂತಿ ಧಾರಯಾಮ್ಯಹಮೋಜಸ ಉಷ್ಣಿ ಚೌಷಧಿ ಸರ್ವಾ ಸೋಮೋ ಭೂತ್ವಾರಸಾತ್ಮಕ ಅಹಂ ವೈಶ್ವಾನರೋ ಭೂತ್ ಪ್ರಾಣಿಹಮಾಶ್ರಿತ ಪ್ರಾಣಾಪಾನ ಸಮುಕ್ತ ಪಚಾಮ್ಯನ್ನಂ ಚತುರ್ವಿಧ ಸರ್ವಸ್ಯಚಾಹಂ ಹೃದಿ ಸನ್ನಿವಿಷ್ಟ ಮತ್ತ ಸ್ಮೃತಿ ಜ್ಞಾನಮಪೋಹನ ವೇದೈಶ ಸರ್ವೈರಹಮೇವ ವೇದ್ಯ ವೇದಾಂತ ಕೃತ್ವೇದ ವಿದೇವಚಾಹಂ ದ್ವಾಮೌ ಪುರುಷೌ ಲೋಕೆ ಕ್ಷರಶ್ಚಾಕ್ಷರ ಕ್ಷರಸರ್ವಾಣಿ ಭೂತಿ ಕೂಟಸ್ಥೋಕ್ಷರ ಉಚ್ಯತೆ ಉತ್ತಮ ಪುರುಷಸ್ವನ್ಯ ಪರಮಾತ್ಮೇದ್ಯುದಾಹೃತ ಯೋ ಲೋಕತ್ರಯಮಾವಿಷ್ಯ ವಿಭತ್ಯವ್ಯಯ ಈಶ್ವರ ಯಸ್ಮತ್ ಕ್ಷರಮತೀತೋಹಂ ಅಕ್ಷರಾದಿ ಚೋತ್ತಮ ಅತೋಸ್ಮಿ ಲೋಕೆ ವೇದೆ ಚಿತ ಪುರುಷೋತ್ತಮ ಯೋ ಮಾಮೇವ ಸಮೂಢ 
जानाति पुरुषोत्तम सर्वेदति मर्वे नारत गोह्यतम शास्त्र उपनिषत्सु ब्रह्म विद्यास्त्रे श्रीकृष्णाजुन संवाद पंचदशोध्यायधर्मात्य मेक शरण व्रज अहम तापे मोक्षयु हरि ओ श्री गुरभ्यो नम if the whole session is given to you both you would be continuing all the different all the chapters because we have to hear we have heard the shlokas of geeta from you you have to hear about these shlokas what krishna has told in the shlokas that's what you're going to hear from pujya swami sadatman ji maharaj who is going to bless us and therefore you know with this we will start you know we have to uh, say hari sharanam to all of you but you know it's really 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 great blessings that you both have got to have a nice guru shrimati meena vaikuntham and you are learning from her uh, not only bhagavad gita bhagavad gita today in the context of this um, day's talk on shri krishna as a gita acharya i requested you to chant the gita i know that you can chant the narayaniyam and various other stotras as well and uh, so you know what you have got now this is going to be a lifelong treasure you know what money or what you know all those things what education you get all those will be there but this is a real spiritual education that your parents and the guru have given to you so as you grow higher and learn for further more and more you know never give up krishna never give up gita never give up narayaniyam and bhagavatam and this is what is going to help you lifelong and you got the blessings of you know all great sadhakas who are watching this today both in the zoom as well as in facebook and in youtube we have got many people who have shared exp- express their joy you know their um, happiness in hearing uh, both of you chanting all those probably some of these uh, i would like to you know uh, read for you so uh, shri anil kumar ji a very senior sadaka who has mentioned chanting continuously for 30 minutes reflects their devotion and what a memory power may god bless you both yes uh, said and shrimati sumitra ma has also uh, mentioned very clear uh, you know chanting nice to hear the pronunciation is excellent god bless the children and uh, also uh, you know many shri ramu ji who is cu- currently transcribing swami uh, uh, paramarthanand ji's uh, talks so on the same chapters he has been doing the work so he is also feeling very blessed to hear so sumati shrinivas has said excellent chanting is a spiritual delight to watch the blessed children chant with such crystal clear pronunciation congrats to their parents and guru you know and there are excellent lot of uh, things so i have also put a challenge to all the people who are watching this you know bhagavad gita uh, challenge ritu didi is saying our ears got pure with you know utter confidence and correct pronunciation thank you ritu didi for this wonderful comments and you know her name itself is shravya so sushravya vagi to anta we say in kannada you know so uh, it was sushravya to hear both of you chanting and uh, may krishna's blessings be always with you i welcome guru shrimati meena also to please come and uh, please accept our pranams guru uh, meena vaikuntham ji please i welcome you hari sharanam hari sharanam welcome nice to see you again uh, uh, and you know if if any of our uh, sadhakas who are watching this want to learn from you, you now looking at skandan shavya many would be motivated uh-huh. they want to get trained themselves and not only uh, the children even elders i'm sure many would be interested 
are you taking any uh, classes even in this period uh, probably through online or something if you can share the yeah, details I, many would I, be <laughs> i teach uh, narayanam and uh, devi mahatmyam through zoom weekend classes we have saturdays we have uh, narayanam classes from 6 to 8 pm and uh, sundays we have devi mahatmyam classes uh, same time 6 to 8 pm on sundays wow uh, i is how how can they you know contact you and you know join your classes if anybody wish to join can you share yeah. uh, your email or something through which they can join you yeah you can uh, write to us at uh, divine scripture classes divine yeah scripture classes scripture classes at gmail.com at gmail.com or you can write to me at meena vaikundan yeah at yahoo.com yes see thank you so much i'm sure many would want to learn from you and uh, thank, thank you so you much for giving us this opportunity yeah thank you for giving the children this opportunity i'm really delighted uh, uh, to participate more and more you know of your uh, satsangs i'm really happy today for giving us this opportunity thank you so much hari sharanam hari sharanam would you like to say something kandan shavya all credit goes to meena aunty our teacher and guru bai rappan who has guided <laughs> us through this journey so hari sharanam thank you hari sharanam radhe krishna thank you again all all our wishes be with uh, you always so friends we are moving to the uh, next uh, part of the uh, program today the talk by swami sadatmanand ji uh, from arshavidya gurukulam anekatti as we all know we are also celebrating along with shri krishna's uh, jayanti along with shri krishna's uh, uh, krishna janmashtami we are also celebrating the uh, 90th jayanti of pooja swami dhanan saraswati maharaj who is the founder of ashwavidya gurukulam at uh, uh, anekati and also at rishikesh sailorsburg is a master of masters guravasya guru as patanjali says in the yoga sutra about ishvara as a guravasya guru that's what our pooja swami dhanan saraswati is and we are very blessed to have swami sadatmanand saraswati who is the chief acharya at arshavidya gurukulam at anekatti and uh, you know uh, before swami ji uh, you know uh, started teaching there at anekatti uh, he had been for a long time more than 20 years at uh, namma bangalore you know as the uh, chief acharya of the arshavidya kendra at uh, atinagar bangalore when i was personally blessed a lot through swami ji satsangs and he used to always have satsang sat prashanti kutiram the uh, svasa university campus of prashanti kutiram uh, also with pooja swami visharadanand ji maharaj so that's where for a long time more than 10 years i had uh, an acquaintance with swami sadatmanand ji maharaj and uh, swami ji at a young age started his uh, spiritual journey even while being in uh, a student of engineering in you know, one of the interviews very nicely he has uh, said his journey i you know all of you should listen to that in the youtube where as a engineering student the spiritual quest in him started and which took him to swami brahmatmanand ji maharaj where he did a three year vedanta course and, and then at uh, uh, 1986 and 89 he got the uh, brahmacharya diksha from swami ji and in the year um, 1997 he was blessed with sanyasa diksha as swami sadatmanand saraswati in the dashanami sanyasa tradition from pooja swami dayanand saraswati maharaj and in the meanwhile even in 1994 he started assuming the acharya ship at arshavidya kendra at bangalore since then he had been uh, teaching uh, vedanta and also the puranas and all our shastras to various aspirants would go there the arshavidya kendra at uh, bangalore has been a great you know center of vedanta of spirituality of even bhakti a lot of bhajans and other things would happen and also a lot of social activities where swami ji involved the devotees there the beautiful center which got developed under his guidance and every year pooja swami ji used to come there and bless the uh, kendra's anniversary as well and uh, also swami ji has been a great you know learner of the shastras so never he did he give up the learning though he had done the three year course with swami brahmatmanand ji later in rishikesh he learned from swami vishardanand ji even at bangalore and pooja swami vishardanand ji used to be at prashanti kutiram swami sadatmanand ji used to have satsanga frequently with him and with pooja swami ji as well and all those you know learn learning that he did being a 
Shrotriya that took him to teach in the prestigious Kailas Ashrama at Rishikesh, the highest you know, learning center of Advaita Peetam. The, uh, the pontiff there, the Mahamandaleshwar Puja Swamiji used to invite Sadat Manaji to come and teach to other sannyasis there in Hindi. And uh, Sadat Manaji can teach very well at Hindi, English and Gujarati. I'm sure now he is learning Tamil also a bit. And um, uh, we are very blessed that he is as, uh, serving as a chief Acharya at Anekati. And uh, he took the three-year course, a Vedanta course there. And after that, a lot of short-term courses he has started. And much more that he would be offering. And uh, uh, we are going to wait and you know, see all those wonderful learning which Swami Sadat Manaji Maharaj is going to give to all of us. So uh, I'm so uh, blessed that Swamiji accepted our invitation the moment I asked him that we are doing this festival. And coinciding with Puja Swamiji's 90th birthday also. So it's a double damaka, Krishna and you know, uh, Swamiji together that we are celebrating. So therefore, I requested Swamiji and um, offer my humble pronouns to him and welcome him to start the talk on Sri Krishna as Gita Acharya. <laughs> Moksha as the Purushartha is freedom as the human goal, which can be achieved here in this tradition. Lord and incarnated in the form of 
श्री कृष्णा एज दुष्ट संहार का द डिस्ट्रॉयर ऑफ राउंड रूवर्स लाइक कंसा एंड अदर्स श्री कृष्णा आल्सो वाज यदुकुल नायक द लीडर ऑफ यदु फैमिली श्री कृष्णा वाज द रूलर ऑफ द्वारका द्वारका दिशा श्री कृष्णा वाज ए ग्रेट फ्रेंड ऑफ पांडवास especially arjuna pandava sahaya arjuna mitram so many aspects are there which manifest various glories of the lord and one of the important aspects of shri krishna avatar is shri krishna as gita charya shri krishna as the teacher of this bhagavad gita teaching took place on the battlefield and the background of this bhagavad gita teaching is there were two families kauravas and pandavas really they were cousins kauravas were 100 in number and they were given to adharma unrighteousness Pandavas were given to Dharma, righteousness, and Pandavas were having a kingdom which was snatched away by Kauravas by unrighteous, unfair means, and there was a condition that Pandavas had to go to the forest. and after a certain period when years they have to remain in cognito for one year and afterwards their kingdom will be given back to them pandavas followed all those conditions and when they came back and asked for the kingdom back kauravas led by duryodhana were not ready and pandavas who are kshatriyas they are said to be chaturupaya akshatriya they have got the poor means to handle the situation kama dana bheda and danda so they employed the first three sama pacification they try to pacify Try to give a sense to Kauravas. Did not work. They Dama. They were ready to let go. So much wealth, so much part of the kingdom. Did not work. So they employed a first. They they tried some diplomacy. Did not work. In fact, they sent. Bhagwan Sri Krishna himself as a messenger for compromise to avoid the war. And Bhagwan Sri Krishna said that if you don't want to give full kingdom which belongs to Pandava, at least give half. Not ready. Kaurava is not ready. Then he said, you at least you give five villages, five Pandavas, five villages. then he said you give one village with five houses one house with five rooms duryodhana said i cannot give that equal to the the what is called the point of a needle that much land i cannot give if they want let them fight and thus Pandavas did not have any other option. When the first three measures, Sama, Dana, Kheda, when these three have failed, then they were helpless to resort to the fourth means, Dandaha, in the form of a war. Now it was not a matter of land. 
it was a matter of the protection of righteousness. And therefore, Pandavas were not having any option but to go for this war called Dharma Yudha Mahabharata. Preparations were made on both sides. Arjuna enters into the battlefield and Arjuna is very clear that this is a Dharma Yudha. It is the war for the protection of dharma. It is not the war for getting land anymore. And he is very enthusiastic. He requested Bhagavan to place his chariot between the two armies so that he can see with whom he has to fight. Very enthusiastic. But all of a sudden there was a turn around. There was a change in the situation. And that was because instead of looking upon the people present there as warriors, which was an objective outlook, he looked upon the people present there as his relatives. And his attachment to the relatives was surfaced. Nada. And because of Radha, there was Shokaha. Radha is attachment that led to Shokaha, greed. When a person has attachment, then the very thought of separation from the object of attachment creates sorrow. And when the Shoka is there, Radha is there, then the thinking of a person is distorted. Person starts thinking upside down, that is called Mohaha. And under the spell of Shoka and Moha, Arjuna started giving the arguments against war. And he said, You should not fight this war. You should withdraw from this. So many arguments he gave. And Bhagavan Sri Krishna listened to all of them very patiently. Giving a very good lesson to all of us that if you want to communicate to someone, you have to listen to that person first. Be a good listener before you become a good teacher. That is the message. And then Bhagavan Sri Krishna, even though he knew the solution, he did not give. In fact, when Arjuna kept quiet, and Bhagavan simply gave some back talk by saying, you get up. And when Arjuna surrendered to Bhagavan and declared himself to be Shishya, Shishya Steha, I am your disciple. Shadimam Tvam Brahmanam, I am surrendered to you. Please teach me. Then only Bhagavan decided to teach. From that, Bhagavan is teaching one more lesson that Vedantic wisdom should be given only when asked and then to properly asked. Na prishtaha kasyajit ruya na cha nyayena prichata He said that but should not talk about especially Vedanta unless one is asked and also asked properly. So Arjuna asked and then he kept quiet. Tushnim Bhabhuva. Then only Bhagavan started. Guru will start his teaching only when Shishya gives quiet. And then Bhagavan started. And how does he start? When he is starting, what is his gesture? Prahasan Yiva as if laughing aloud. Idea is that that he is very happy, very joyful when he is teaching. Teaching is not a job to be finished. Teaching is not a burden for him. He is a joyful teacher. And he 
he started giving his teaching. Ashocha nanva shocha spam pragna vadasya vasa se gata suna gata sushya am shocha nti pandita. Arjuna, you are grieving for something which does not deserve grief. And you are talking like a vice person. But really you are not a vice person. Why? Pandita ha na anu shocha nti. Wise people do not grieve. Means grief and wisdom don't go together. <laughs> If wisdom is there, grief will not be there. And thus, he suggested that wisdom is the solution to the problem of sorrow. And what type of wisdom? The wisdom of the true nature of oneself. Use the true nature of the world as well, and he gave that atmic dhanam, which makes the person free from sorrow. And what did he say? He said, Arjuna, you are not what you think yourself to be. Vishnu Pita and others, for whom you have got so much attachment, they are also not what you think them to be. In reality, Vishnu Pita Maha and yourself are one Atma, one self of the nature of existence consciousness, which is free from all modifications, which is free from destruction, free from doership. It is not confined to a particular body. It is manifesting through all bodies, not limited by any body. It is free from being the doer of any action. It is free from being the object of any action. Asandha, unaffected by it. And when you understand this self and assimilate this understanding, you will not have any sorrow. Thus. Bhagavan gave the self knowledge as the solution to the problem of sorrow. But this wisdom which Bhagavan gave can be received properly and can be assimilated when a person is qualified. In the sense, a person has got purity of the mind. Chitta shuddhi is required. Receive this wisdom effectively, and for getting chitta shuddhi, karma yoga is the means. And therefore, after talking about the self knowledge, Bhagwan talked about karma yoga. People have got so many funny ideas about karma yoga. Generally, people think that remaining very busy is karma yoga, remaining all the time active that is karma. All while doing the action, you have to say Rama, 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 Rama. Then only it is karma. Or when you are doing the action, you should not even think of, even plan of result. That is karma yoga. All these are not correct ideas about karma. What is karma yoga? Bhagwan himself defined. Samatvam yoga. The sameness is called yoga, and the sameness cannot be there with reference to action. Means you cannot have same activities all the time. So sameness cannot be there with reference to activities. Sameness cannot be there with reference to the result also. Why? Because results will be different, action will be different, so results also will be different. And where is the sameness? Sameness is there in my attitude. And attitude towards what? Karma and karma phala. So attitude towards karma remains the same. Whether I like to do something or I don't like to, my attitude is the same. And what is the attitude? This is my duty, and let me do it. 
as an offering to the Lord. As Baba is going to say in eighty chapter, Swakarmana Tamabhyarcha Siddhim Bhindati Manava. So the sameness of attitude towards action. Every action is seen as an opportunity to worship the Lord. So through action, I worship the Lord. This is the attitude towards action. So Ishwaran Panabuddhi is the attitude towards action. Ishwaran Panabuddhi means attitude of offering the action to the Lord. And what is the attitude towards the result? The attitude is that result is coming from the Lord. And results can be more than my expectation, less than my ex expectation, equal to my expectation, or opposite to my expectation. So results may vary, but my attitude towards all types of result is the same. And what is that? Prasad Dukhi, I accept it as Prasad. So with reference to karma, my attitude is Ishwara Pranabhuti. With reference to the result, my attitude is Prasad Buddhi. Buddhi means attitude. And having the sameness of attitude is Yoga. And when a person does karma with this attitude, then he remains unaffected from the harmful effect of karma. And that is why Bhagavan said, Yoga Karma Sukhaushana. Karma Yoga is a kaushala, is a skill. How it is a skill? Because generally karma creates reaction. And because of that person becomes dukhi, unhappy, depressed, frustrated. Whereas Karma Yoga keeps the person free from reaction. And in that manner, Karma Yoga is a skill. Not skill in the sense of efficiency in action, but it is a skill of keeping oneself free from any reaction which can be caused by karma or karma karma. And thus, in the second chapter, Bhagavan talked about the Nana Yoga, otherwise called Sankhya Yoga and Karma Yoga. And then he talked about the Sthita Pratha Lakshanas. The characteristics of the vice versa. And then, third chapter onwards, there is elaboration of what has been said in the second chapter. So, second chapter presents the subject matter of the entire Bhagavad Gita briefly. And in the third chapter, this Karma Yoga topic was elaborated. And one important point was mentioned by the Lord, Yadyada Charati Shreshtaha Tatta Deve Tarojana Sayat Pramana Purute Rokastadal Vartha. So, whatever a leader does, all other people follow. And whatever a leader approves of, that is considered to be standard by others. Therefore, a leader has to be very careful in his conduct and what he is approving of, what he is not approving of, about that he should be mindful. And even if he is a wise person and he doesn't require activities for himself, but for the benefit of others, he should continue doing that. Thus, Karma Yoga was elaborated. Then, incidentally, Arjuna's question was answered that. What prompts the person to do wrong things? Bhagavan said, Kamaha. This desire, uncontrollable desires, lead the person to this power. And then how to handle that also was taught. In the fourth chapter, there was discussion on avatara. What is the nature of incarnation, avatara? What is the hetu? The cause for avatara, what is the purpose of avatara, all these points related to avatara were taught. And the main topic is 
nana karma sanyasa how one can be free from action even while remaining abyss to action and thus the way to remain free from action with the help of knowledge that topic was adopted and many sadhanas also were done in the fifth chapter as an answer to arjuna's question the topic of karma yoga was elaborated emphasized and the mission of vice person the result of wisdom of atma also was or then the sixth chapter for dhyana yoga the preparation for meditation was started what are the immediate preparations what are general preparations and what is the nature of meditation atma samstham mana krutva na kinchit api chintaye meditation is abiding the mind in the self and not thinking about anything else the nature of dhyana was talked about palam of dhyana was talked about and when this Dhyana is done successfully. Then Shanti Nirvana Paramam Adigarchandi one attains Shanti, abiding peace, freedom. And then obstacles in meditation, the restlessness of the mind. So we will discuss the solution to this obstacle. How to handle those obstacles? That also was talked about. Bhagwan said, "Ya se ne tu kaun de ya." वैराग्यान This type, what will happen to him? That was discussed in Bhagwan Kansol Arjuna. That once you have started on the right path, then there is no fall. As Swami Chidman used to say, there can be ups and downs, but there is no fall in spiritual. And then in the seventh chapter, there is a slight change in the year of Bhagwan's teaching. From one to six. Six chapters are called Kam Padartha Pradhan, where the nature of Jiva was highlighted, and the sadhana of Karma Yoga was highlighted, and self efforts were highlighted. Whereas from the seven to twelve, six chapters, Ishvara Swarupa is emphasized, is elaborated. The sadhana of Bhakti or otherwise, the upasana is highlighted, and the importance and the glory of Ishvara is raised. We talked about. So thus, there is a some shift in Bhagwan's teaching, and in the seventh chapter, he talked about Ishvara as the cause of the world, and also he talked about the samsara karana in the form of the cause for samsara. the cost of bondage in the form of ignorance and ignorance for mistakes and the solution to this problem of samsara is bhakti and here bhakti has got a very broad meaning any sadhana for the attainment of moksha is called bhakti and therefore karma yoga also is a bhakti upasana also is a bhakti and dhyana yoga also is a And Bhagwan talked about four types of devotees: Chatur Vidha, Bhajante, Imam, Janasupati, Narjuna, Arto, Jigta, Suratthati, Nani, Chavaratarsha. Four types of devotees. The devotee in distress, he remembers Bhagwan only when he is in problem. Arthati, who wants some material prosperity and therefore he remembers Bhagwan. Third devotee, Jigta. He doesn't want anything from Bhagwan. He wants Bhagwan himself, and Bhagwan can be attained only by knowing the 
himself to be identical with himself, and therefore he wants knowledge. And that is Jignasuva. And when Jignasu attains Dalam, he is Nari Bhakta. And then Nari Bhakta was Yogita. And then in the eighth chapter, Bhagavan answered some seven questions. Then he talked about Antakala Smaranam. Remembering the Lord at the end leads the person to higher God. That was talked and also Saguna Upasana with the help of Omkara and the paths to reach the higher lokas. That topic also was discussed in the 8th chapter. In the ninth chapter, the topics are very similar to the 7th chapter. Where this Ishwara Dharam, which is the means for moksha, was talked about and the emphasis on the Nishkama Bhakti the devotion for the spiritual goal was done. And the glorification of bhakti also was done. Whatever be your background, if you have devotion for the Lord, you will attain Paramatma. That topic was highlighted. In the 10th chapter, the Bhumi, the glories of the Lord were described. And the connection between the bhakti and atma jnana, worshipping the Lord and getting this self knowledge, the connection was talked about. And then in the 11th chapter, Arjuna requested Bhagavan, please show me your cosmic form. And Bhagavan immediately obliged, without any first thing. Then you want to see? See? And he showed his cosmic form. And Arjuna underwent different emotions. First, there was a sense of wonder. Then, there was a <clears throat> sense of fear. And then finally, he gets the sense of surrender. Thus, different emotions Arjuna underwent. And thus, 11th chapter is dedicated to cosmic vision. Means, seeing the Lord in the form of the entire universe. That is not only for Arjuna. Anybody who understands Ishwara properly, he also can have Vishnu Upanishad. And then in the 12th chapter, various stages of Bhakti were not. What are the stages? One is, the first one is, one starts with the highest. He says, this Nirguna Bhakti, Nirguna Dana Rupa Bhakti, and then Vishwarupa Bhakti, then sorry, Vishwarupa Upasana, then Ekarupa Upasana, then Nishkama Karmanushtana Rupa Karma Yoga, and then Prasada Buddhi Lakshana Karma Yoga, which he calls Sarva Karma Palatyada. So, these five stages of Bhakti were taught. Then, in the 13th chapter, Bhagavan talked about six topics. Purusha, Prakriti, Nanam, Neyam, and Kshetra, Kshetra. Six topics were now. And mainly, it is regarding the knowledge of Brahman, which is the ultimate reality. And that Brahman is to be discovered as one son. And that is Jiva, Brahma, Ekya must talk. In fact, from 13th chapter, the third section starts 13 to 18. These six chapters are dealing with the Aikya, the oneness between Jiva and Ishwara. So, first six chapters, Jiva Swarupa, the 7 to 12, Ishwara Swarupa, and 13 to 18, the Aikya Gnanam, the knowledge of oneness is present. And then values were taught in the 13th chapter. And Purusha Prakriti, the conscious principle and matter principle also were taught. In the 14th chapter, the Gunatre Vibhaga, Sattva Guna, Rajo Guna, and Tamo Guna, their nature, their indicators, their result, and then they are predominant and percentized, what will be the law? All three Guna related topics 
Yes, my confusion is gone. Then, Bhagavan is glorified. Sorry, Arjuna acknowledged and before that Bhagavan had glorified the teaching of Bhagavad Gita, listening to Bhagavad Gita, etc. Then Sanjaya comes, who is narrating the whole dialogue between Sri Krishna and Arjuna, and he expressed his joy about listening to this teaching. And finally, he says, Yatra Yogeshwara Krishna, Yatra Partho Dhanurdhara, Tatra Sri Vijayor Bhuti, Uba Nidil Mandir Mama. He said, Where Bhagavan Sri Krishna is there, where Arjuna is there, there will be victory, there will be prosperity. Thus, 18th chapter, he is done. And if we have to see what is the summary, what is the essence of Bhagavad Gita, then somebody said, nice. What is the first word of Bhagavad Gita? Dharma Kshetre Guru Kshetre Samaveta Yudhusava Mamaka Pandava Sheva Makurubata Sanjaya. And last word is what? Dharma. Tatra Shri Vijayo, sorry, Mama. Tatra Shri Vijayo Bhutir. Dua Nitir Mandir Mama. So last word is Mama, first word is Dharma. You combine them. So what is the essential, essential teaching of Bhagavad Gita? Mama Dharma. My Dharma. Now Dharma has what? Two meanings. Dharma means one's duties, values and attitude. That is called Dharma. And another meaning of dharma is my true nature. Dharma means nature. So, mama dharma means my true nature. And also mama dharma means my duties with proper attitude following values. So, Bhagavad Gita's <coughs> essential teaching is follow your dharma well. Do your duties properly following the values and having proper attitude towards your duties. And by following dharma in this manner, you will get purity of the mind. So follow dharma, get the purity, and once purity has come, go to the teacher and get the knowledge, and that knowledge will make you free. So purify yourself by following dharma, and then understand your dharma nature, which is ever free, and by that you will be free. So, purify, know yourself, be free, is the teaching of Bhagavad Gita. And if you see some salient features of Bhagavan Sri Krishna as a teacher, then Few things just now we discussed during this uh, our discussion on the subject matter that Bhagavan Sri Krishna was a great listener. That is the first thing. Second thing, he was very joyful teacher, not a sad teacher. So if a teacher himself is sad, he cannot make the student free from sadness. Right. Third feature is he is very respectful to Arjuna. When he addresses Arjuna, he doesn't say, Oh, Udu, oh, singer, oh, Papi. He doesn't say that. But he says, Anagha, Papi from Papi. Guru Sharshaba, you are the best among all human beings. Guru Sattama, you are the best among all the descendants of Guru. He always address Arjuna in a very respectful, encouraging manner. So, as a teacher, he was respectful to the student. And he was very loving us in his expression. Every now and then says, You are my friend, you are very dear to me. And therefore, I am teaching. I love you. So, teacher needs to be very loving the students. Out of love alone, the teaching will come properly. And one more feature is Bhagavan Sri Krishna, he is giving the 
is teaching methodical. When he talks about Gunatraya, he is methodical. Sattva Rajas Tama, indicators, nature. What happens when predominance is there? So he is quite methodical. And also his teaching is very palatable even to ordinary people, unlike Upanishad. Quite palatable. And at the same time, he is sometimes mischievous also. And putting some ideas in a very crisp manner. Nasato vidyate bhavaha na bhavo vidyate sata. He did it like a, what they call brain tickling. So, person has to heal him. And one more thing, as a teacher, we can appreciate is, he gave freedom to Arjuna. I have taught you this. But still, Yate Chasi Tathatu. As you wish, you do it. You deliberate upon my teaching. Yate Chasi Tathatu. And one more feature is, he is very caring. That is why he cared to ask Arjuna. Arjuna, has my teaching helped you? Is your Adhana Moha is Pranashtaha? If it is not, I am ready to give more. That is can. So, as a Gita Charya, as a teacher of Bhagavad Gita, Sri Krishna really excelled the Purnavata. So all the features of the teacher, he manifested very well. Then he gave Padesha to Arjuna. So Gita Charya is a Purna Acharya. And therefore, we pray to Lord Krishna that may we have this teaching of Bhagavad Gita reflected in our life and we attain the vision which he has imparted in Bhagavad Gita. Yes. Dhanyavad Swamiji, it was an excellent talk, summarizing the entire essence of Gita, as you rightly had you know, categorically gone through each and every chapter. What is the essence in each and every chapter? How Krishna as a great teacher understands the situation of the student and is bringing the quaint essence of all the Vedanta, all the Upanishads and brings it to the relevance of the situation where Arjuna stood there. So, wow, what a wise, nice summary. You know, it looks, it gives us a satisfaction of uh, reading the entire Gita, all the 18 chapters, shloka by shloka, all the 700 shlokas. You know? So, it's like, you know, uh, by listening to this, we have got a beautiful, not just, you know, they say a bird's eye view or uh, something. It's not a bird's eye view. It's, it's you know, kind of the world's view. You have not left any uh, aspect untouched and with such precision, such clarity, Swamiji, that you have given to us the whole essence of Gita. If only we hear this talk punah punaha again and again, I think that is a great Shravanam, which can take us to uh, a great sadhana in itself. And there is comparisons like with Yoga Shastra and all also, Swamiji, you brought it. And especially the last part I liked very well, like how as a Gita Acharya, as a teacher, you know, he understands the student and accordingly he brings it. So he is, you know, you also said he's respectful and also, you know, kind of very light, though he's bringing the highest of Vedanta, in a very light way how he brings it. Yes. So as Ramuji said, it's juice extracted and added with honey and given in a full glass. You're right, Ramuji. That's what Swamiji has given to us. You know, what else that, you know, it will be, how else it will be? You know, he's bringing us the beautiful parampara of Arshavidya, parampara of Pujya, Swami Dayanand Saraswati Maharaj. And you have given us a great hope. He said, you know, in Gita, there, is, there could be ups and downs, but no fall. So this is a great hope that we are getting in this difficult situation, the pandemic situation. Satsanga, I think Gita is, and Sri Krishna, his way is the only way ahead for all of us to go ahead. We are immensely blessed by your presence and blessings, Swamiji, even though you know you are busy with your classes. Uh, 
uh, you have taken time to bless us as always uh, even during your days at bangalore uh, whenever you know i have sought your guidance you had been kind enough and also after going to the ashram whenever uh, we required your guidance at uh, the um, ashwavidya gurukulam you know you have been guiding us and even now uh, we are so glad that you know your guidance is with us and uh, thank you uh, swami ji for all that uh, guidance that you have been uh, giving towards us and uh, quickly before we you know uh, conclude i had uh, told how many of you are ready to uh, read the gita at least one chapter of the gita you know and memorize the shlokas you know if it should not be already known you can take the task and uh, start memorizing something new even if you knew already so you could learn a new chapter and before the end of this month before the 30th of august so if you are ready you could you know also send me the message and we would you know like to listen the chanting of the gita shlokas from you and uh, also i would like to give you some assignments like a class what swami ji very nicely brought a sense of each chapter after listening to his talk can you summarize chapter by chapter chapter 1 what swami ji said chapter 18 like 1 to 18 so that could be a kind of uh, anusandhana again you know what swami ji has told you can listen and then make and you can share in the group for the benefit of everybody and also one more thing a very salient features swami ji brought for example of a uh, uh, acharya lakshana in the end how he, krishna as a gita acharya and you know, how was a teacher he was there so the teachers lakshana so all those points you know, some of you can take note down and share to all of us that will be of uh, very great uh, uh, help and uh, uh, service so uh, we would again um, seek swami ji's uh, blessings and uh, guidance and then before that we would again before we talk to swami ji and ask his uh, uh, questions we would just uh, move with the uh, song the utsava geetam the krishnam vande jagat gurum and then we would come back to jaya yadu kula dilaga bhagavan yamuna dira jaga devaki stota vasudeva sudha madhava madhura mana swamin namava deva varuna madhava madhura mana swamin namava deva varuna nanda nanda kara gopi
Every time we listen to this beautiful song, the melting melody from Deepika, beautifully composed by Dr. Jairaman, we recollect all those wonderful leelas that Sri Krishna has done and all the wonderful teachings that he has given us as Jagat Guru. With this Jagat Guru Krishna Smarana, we would once again try to look into the programs for tomorrow. I request uh, Achala to share the program for uh, tomorrow. So tomorrow we're going to have in the Krishna Kala series in the beginning, uh, we're going to have an excellent devotional concert by Kumari Divya Priya Bhavanani, who is uh, a gifted uh, yogini, I would say, uh, at a young age from Pondicherry. Uh, she is the daughter of Dr. Anand Bhala Yogi Bhavanani, a wonderful, uh, great yoga master of, of our contemporary times. And, uh, Divya Priya is also the granddaughter of Swami Gitan and the Giri of Pondicherry. And we have heard in the yoga festival, Dr. Anand Bhaliyogi Bhavanani speak. So his daughter is going to sing for us Swagadam Krishna, beautiful devotional concert that we are going to have tomorrow in the Krishna Kala series. And that will be followed by uh, the talk on Adhyatma Yoga of Sri Krishna by none other than our Pujya Achari Ji, Dr. Ramchandra Bhatt who is the mentor, the guru for all of us. We have seen him on the Guru Purnima time in the uh, Global Festival of Yoga also, who is the guru of Dr. Vinay Chandra as well. So on that occasion, we saw him uh, to speak about the importance of Guru Parampara in the, in the yoga concept. So he's going to speak on Adhyatma Yoga of Sri Krishna. Don't miss it. It's the most wonderful topic. We are so glad, delighted from Adhyatma Yoga Academy and Advaita Academy to have such a great Acharya, Dr. Ramchandra Bhatji to talk on Adhyatma Yoga tomorrow and at the same time we would be having him also with us. And uh, thank you Achala for sharing the details for tomorrow and we are going to also uh, have excellent beautiful other sessions on the days to come and the day after tomorrow we are going to uh, have uh, on the 15th, excellent uh, session by uh, Dr. Sriniti Parthasarathy. It's going to be a musical discourse. So I welcome all of you to join with kids also to join on this uh, great musical discourse on 15th we're going to have. And on 16th uh, as well, we're going to have a great warrior who fought in the Kargil war, Captain Naveen Nagappa, who's going to talk about stand up, determined to fight. So how Krishna's teachings right now we heard from Swamiji how it all helped a warrior to fight in the uh, warfare, especially the Kargil war, which was so critical for our country. 
So it is then when he says, Naveen Nagappa says, Gita gave a lot of strength to warriors. So this is what we're going to hear from a warrior who fought in the um, Kargil war on, on the 16th. Uh, I wanted to have him on 15th, but uh, because of the Independence Day, he's busy. So 16th we are having, and then the line the programs, you know, I'm going to share with all of you the programs for the whole month. So it's all packed. So thank you so much. Yes, thank you, Radhaji, who had shared. Thanks for being thoughtful to think of putting the summary on the group. Yes, G, we would uh, definitely share it. So you all can also share. So all your uh, you know feedbacks, all your ideas. If you have any wonderful thoughts to share, please feel free to share. It's a family in which we're all sharing with each other. And again, today we offer this uh, beautiful talk of Puja Swami Sadat Maranji. Maharaj, as our dedication to Puja Swami Dhanan Saswatiji, whose 90th birthday we are celebrating this week. On, on uh, the 9th of August, it was as per the Nakshatra, and on 15th of August, it's going to be his date of birth, Swamiji, who was a great master of all masters. So when we think of Gita, you know, we think of Swami Chinmayananji and Swami Dhanan Saraswati Maharaj. So with this thought of these great Jagat Gurus, let's you know, conclude today's uh, session with this beautiful Guru Smarana and Krishna Smarana. Jai Shri Krishna. See you all tomorrow again. Thank you. Namaste.